Yes, it does I'm David respond. Hetherington, uh, and uh, I'm going to pretend that we're a little better organized here than we actually are. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I really don't. Uh, it's my first time to be a speaker here, and I'm a butt first, and I just barely understood which room I was supposed to show up in. Uh, and uh, this is not going to be an extremely serious, uh, serious talk. But uh, you know, there's some people like you're going to China first time soon, and uh, other people maybe. I, I, I put this in as a, be a so-called beginner level, uh, intentionally. Uh, this won't have any bar charts, market analysis, nothing like that. Uh, so first, I uh, talk a little bit about. My own experience. So, I, my first trip to, uh, to Beijing was in 1987. As you can see, I had hair at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> and uh, it, it was uh, it was re really fun. So, that that this time, um, I had just gotten married. By that, I could speak some Japanese. By that, I couldn't speak any Chinese. Flew through Hong Kong. Uh, IBM had bought our company. I was working for a company called Rollm that made telephone systems that IBM had bought. And um, at that time, the only route that IBM would let anyone fly was Hong Kong to Beijing, because any other flights inside the country were too dangerous. <laughs> so, uh, so you were only allowed to, if you needed to fly in China, that was the only route you could fly. That's mine. Now, now here's uh, just practical tips for people just going. Hotels. Hotels in China are very nice. They're a good value. They're not dirt cheap. But if you compare the prices to San Francisco, even Austin, Hong Kong, Singapore, Tokyo. What you get in a hotel in China, you get a lot of a lot of very high quality uh, service and uh, room at a reasonable price. Now, no tipping. There's a company there called Dajong, uh, and uh, Dajong taxis are good. They're clean. They're professional. No, nothing funny happening. Oh, after after. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. So I'm actually going to Shenzhen this summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder. If, uh, so I. Looks like I'm going to be landing in Shenzhen Airport. Yeah, it's about an hour. So, from the city. do I have to be aware of illegal transportation? Oh, any airport in China. So, it depends on that. Shenzhen is a second tier airport, it's a nice airport, but it's a former military base and it's about an hour from downtown Shenzhen, so it's a long drive. Uh, yeah, look around, watch. There's usually a very clearly marked, it's a new airport, so there'll be a clearly marked taxi line. Certainly do that. Don't take, let anyone approach you, stand in the line, look for a policeman who's monitoring the line, hopefully we'll be there. And even pay attention to that. Watch if there's arguments going on or something, be extra aware. But usually, it, it, you know, that Hong Chao was a bit of an exception, uh, uh, but it's going to be a long short ride. So uh, uh, yes, uh, because that, that isn't really close to Shenzhen. This is one tip. This doesn't work perfectly either, but I do it anyway. It's better than nothing is you get to the hotel you're going, you click on the Chinese language page, screen print that, and, and have that in your hand when you get to the taxi driver. That's at least a start. What I found I generally have to do is do some combination of this and the picture, get the hotel name in Chinese, which I can read, put that up to 36 point font, get the, to the phone, and put that up to 36 wow. point font, and uh, the, the taxi drivers all have cell phones. So your goal with the taxi driver going to the hotel is to get them to call the hotel and let the hotel tell them how to get them. Wait, so yeah. I, well, I, I'm kind of scared now. So <laughs> <laughs> I do, I'm learning Chinese for, for my own sake, but yeah, so do they, are you? There, so is a, there is a foolproof alternative, but it's a little expensive, and that is you have the hotel send the hotel card. Oh, yeah. That works perfectly flawless. Sorry. Never fails, but it might be a hundred bucks. Yeah. So in the room, and in by the way, it's this all over Asia. The American team will look like this. <laughs> <laughs> One guy shows up alone. Yeah. I'm my, my, my lone, rugged individual. You know, I I don't need no speaking team. I got my and you get killed. You know, in this because the classic <clears throat> pattern uh, of this all over Asia is you're there and. You're talking, and you talk to the translator. Decision maker actually speaks English pretty well, just doesn't show it. So <laughs> decision maker gets to listen to you while you're talking to the translator. Then the translator turns around and is the official translator. The decision maker doesn't actually have to listen to the translation because it already heard you and speaks, speaks English. And just you know, kind of listen. So the decision maker gets a lot of time to think about what to do. 
The decision maker responds in Chinese to the translator, a clueless American, you don't, can't understand anything. Then the translator begins to speak, whose decision maker can watch you and see your reaction. This is like just a poker nightmare. You know, uh, this is just a stupid way to do stuff. Just not, 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 quick, hmm? yeah. a quick question on, on that specifically. Usually different cultures have different styles of, of negotiating. How would you classify Chinese? Are they always looking for a solution? Are they always looking for the lowest price? Uh, do they never say yes in the first offer? What are the subtleties around? Chinese are extremely difficult. You don't want to negotiate by yourself, which we'll get to in a minute. But the point, key point about China.